All right, guys, back at the um, 1986 GMC S15. You know, I got rid of most of the beer cans out of the back of the truck, and they just keep popping up from somewhere. So it's time to clean this guy up. So I'm going to get it up onto my driveway, and I got to tear out a whole bunch of electrical unnecessary stuff and just clean this truck up. So uh, stick around if you want to see how that goes. She's leaking transmission fluid pretty bad. I had to drop this pan underneath it just to not make too big of a mess on our street. I think it's coming out of the Speedo cable connection, but i uh, not too positive. I will deal with that on, at another day though. Today the goal is to get everything cleaned out on this truck get the tailgate down and um, just kind of clean out the interior, clean out the bed, clean out the toolbox, see what goodies came with this truck, if anything. And then I'm also going to pop the hood and um, clean out the engine bay. And as a matter of fact, that's gonna be the first thing I do because I need to soak it down uh, with some degreaser to get a head start on the cleaning. The degreaser I'm going to use under the hood is just a regular old, this is super clean, it's in an aerosol can, it foams up, but I still have regular super clean as well. Super clean has been a pretty uh, good supporter of the channel. Um, you know, I don't receive any compensation from them, they do send free product from time to time. Um, but you know, that doesn't make me like 100% loyal to them, I guess. I don't know. I use what works. Super clean does a pretty good job. Worst case scenario, I might have to come in with some um, simple green, but uh, super clean, if you've seen any of my past videos, you know it does a really good job with real greasy um, situations. So every once in a while they'll reach out to me and ask me if I want to give away some product. And so uh, you'll see those videos come up from time to time. So just keep that in mind. If you want to try some of this stuff out without having to pay for it, you can always uh, try to win some. From my channel but that's not this video unfortunately they haven't reached out in a couple of months um, they usually cut reach out about every six months so i'll be sure to drop a video next time they have a giveaway and uh, get you guys involved all right let's get this guy open that hood release leaves much to be desired get this stuff off of here and whole hood latch situation needs to be sorted out eventually. Alright, so the reason I'm cleaning out the engine bay is just to make it nicer to work on, first of all, but second of all, I need to see where oil is leaking from, if there is any active oil leaks under the uh, hood here. I don't get any active drips under the engine, so I think we're pretty good. Um, so, I'm gonna, let's, I'm gonna pull this, um, the the uh, air cleaner just to give me some more room to, to spray the, the uh, degreaser and then uh, I'm gonna try to stay away from the electronics so basically I'm gonna go from like the air cleaner down and clean everything around that All right, a couple of observations here as I'm digging through this. That intake boot, it's very strange. It kind of just goes into like a structural member of the truck. Um, I don't even really see, I guess way down at the bottom, way down there, there's an opening. And so it, the air comes in down there 
goes up through this metal there's a metal channel that that this hose is attached to and then it goes through the air intake i wonder what the reasoning behind that is and i wonder if opening it up would do anything beneficial i got a little vacuum line here that runs to this little solenoid or something i'm not sure what that is there i'm still waiting on my service manual to come in looks like i do have a vacuum leak i do have a vacuum hose that has been expertly plugged with a drill bit right here and i maybe that is the uh the hose in question the, i mean it would make sense because it goes down right in the same general area so that vacuum line is plugged but this one is not and I don't know what that's for here's our injector system this is TBI throttle body injection this looks like a mix between EFI and carburation so maybe that's uh, what TBI is all right I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy out of the way and get this stuff soaked down you know before I hit it with the foam I'm gonna hit it with the with the air gun I've got like acorns and stuff down in the valley here and all in this mess so I'll cover all of this and I'm just gonna hit it with the with my air gun. pretty much seized and that's probably why the battery is just sitting on top of the hold down uh, the tray isn't doing too good either um, luckily that's a easily replaceable part I'm not too concerned about that let's go ahead and spray down everything here with this foaming degreaser I don't know if you could tell but as I was blowing off everything all the flat black paint was just flying off of everything. All these chrome valve covers and somebody just came in with a rattle can and went nuts with the flat black paint. All right, we'll let that cook for a while while we clean up some other stuff. All right, I got my pressure washer all ready to go. I'm going to go to town inside that engine bay with it. Just kidding, guys. Just a gentle hose with a gentle sprayer. You don't want to go too crazy, right? You don't want to knock any sensors off or force water into areas that you don't really want it to, to be. Alright guys, it looks it already looks a ton better inside here. I'm gonna wipe it down or just get the really uh, wet stuff out. I didn't get everything, but I did, it did a pretty good job. I'm just gonna have my fingers crossed that you know this engine is still gonna start after all of this. I'm gonna give it plenty of time to dry before I even attempt to start it though. I'm also going to clean out the inside of my 
breather. And get that ready to go as well. Now, let's start with the toolbox here. See what all comes here. So we have the, uh, the center caps for our Camaro rims. So I guess I'll set those over here. Got some ATF. Um, that's probably a sign of an ongoing issue. What else we got in here? That, like some type of cable organizer, an old set of spark plugs. The, uh, I guess the new spark plugs that were put in at some time. A box full of hardware. Just looks like doesn't even look like uh, vehicle hardware. Just just hardware. And there's ATF all over the inside of this thing too. Alrighty, I need to get a trash bag. A funnel. Looks like an OBD1 to OBD2 adapter maybe. I don't really know much about the OBD1 systems. Fluid pump. Um, I guess it's for transferring transmission fluid. It looks like somebody had bought this from buyrider.com. Is that a thing? I don't even know about what that website is. Nice. Nice. The guy I bought it from said he had to clean out a whole bunch of drug paraphernalia from the inside of the truck, so... <laughs> So uh, there's that. The previous owner only had this truck for three months. I don't know if I mentioned that before. So he didn't really get to do a whole lot with it. We got a uh, holster for something. And then there's an iPod, which is strange. I wonder if that works. This is my tow strap. Save the day when I tried to pick this up. And then we got a two inch ball and a hitch. You wouldn't believe how many of these I have. I always end up with them. Here is the old Missouri temporary tag for a Dodge, a 2009 Dodge. Well, what do you know? It looks like I did have the cap, after all. This doesn't look like the same cap that I pulled off, though. Came from a different U-joint. Matt Pike for president. Follow the smoke to the rift filled land. Nice. My dad said he did me a favor and pulled this off the bumper. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't even realize it was on there. All right. So I'm going to get a trash bag. I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to clear out these pine needles and pine cones and the beer cans. I feel like work has been done. This is an old uh, headlight box. This is... Um, I don't know what it is. 
It's got a label on it that covers what it is. Maybe a solenoid or something. Hopefully those aren't scotch lock connectors. Anyway, I'm gonna clean up the stuff, the throw away the stuff that needs to be thrown away and save the stuff that needs to be saved. I don't think I'm saving a lot of this though. Spark plug number six didn't make it into the, oh, that's a completely different spark plug. Who knows? All right, while I'm cleaning out the rest of the back of this truck, I'm gonna go ahead and soak down this uh, toolbox. Get this ATF out of here as best as I can. So to get this guy, I think I need to pull up on the handle, grab this tab right here. And then somehow have a third hand to be able to hold it all and pull it. It's going to need a little bit of lubrication. I think I'm missing a piece inside that latch. This is not ideal. Neither is this. It's not going to, um, I mean, it's not going to rot away within the next couple of months, but I do need to come up with a plan to at least stop that rust from happening. I think it sits directly on the rails here, and that's part of the reason why it's rotting right here. All right, the uh, toolbox is done. It's actually in really good condition, considering. Uh, it looks like it was manufactured in 2021, so it's fairly new. Um, air struts still work. I think it's gonna serve its purpose very well for just, I think it's just gonna carry a set of jumper cables, maybe a roadside kit and a small tool kit. And then whatever else my son ends up packing into it. but. I don't have keys for it, but these lock cylinders are very easy to replace and you can get them just about anywhere. So I'm not too worried about that. It'd be much more difficult if this thing was stuck in the locked position, but it's not. It's just open. This tailgate is not long for this world. It fits so tight to the bed that it actually does create a seal um, that holds water back and then that water ends up seeping in by any means necessary. And you can see that this, this rolled lip on the underside is, it's not completely gone. I, I don't think this is so bad. I'm more concerned about these holes here. Um, so I think I want to, when I fix the latch, I'm probably going to treat the outside and then fluid film the inside to try to slow down the rot because all this rot is taking place on the inside of the tailgate, not so much on the outside. Like it comes in through these holes and then there's nowhere for it to go. So then it just pulls on this bottom edge and uh, it rots it all away. But I, it's still a solid tailgate though. I, I, it's still usable and it still looks good when it's closed. So I'm not, you know, I'm at least happy about that part. All right, now that I got all the junk out of the 
the bed of the truck and out of the toolbox and I've cleaned out underneath the hood. The next step is going to be getting inside here and cleaning out the cab and removing all the unnecessary stuff uh, including that amplifier and all that wiring and trying to clean up the wiring inside there. And while I'm at it I'm going to go ahead and remove this alarm system and uh, all of its associated wiring and we'll see uh, how well it cleans up once I get to that point. All right, everything's dried out pretty good under here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the breather back on. <clears throat> you might try to reconnect this uh, vacuum line here. I'm missing a barb or something on this elbow, but if I pull off the elbow, and then I might be able to just slide this on. No, it won't reach. All right, so I'll just put everything back the way it was and then need to get a piece of vacuum hose or something that's long enough that's been cut off. I'm gonna clean up here a little bit so I can pull the truck in. Cause I, I wanna I don't wanna be in the sunlight <clears throat> while I'm working on this. It's hot enough as it is. I think my life will be a lot easier if I end up pulling these seats out. Um, so that's probably what I'm gonna do first. And then I think I might pull the uh, floor out. It's a vinyl floor. Um, cause eventually I'm going to need to address the, or the holes in the floor pan and, um, that floor is going to have to come out for that anyway. So I'll do all that and then it'll give me access to everything. I'll be able to clean everything up. Alright, so this since this was converted from a bench seat, you'll see I've got three buckles for two seats. And this is the uh, lap belt for the middle seat that's just been taped up. There's only four studs for the seats because it was a bench seat. And so, in order to convert to bucket seats, they just kind of wallered out a couple holes here used a bunch of mismatched hardware these studs are 15 millimeter and the bolts that they use for the other side the inboard side of the seats are 9 16 kind of a hot mess in here there's like socks and underwear over there which i'm not too happy to get my hands on um so i'm just gonna go through i don't think there's anything worth saving in here if I find anything interesting, I'll put the camera back on. Well guys, there's really not a whole lot to speak of inside this truck. I mean, it, I'm finding paperwork that tells kind of a sad story of one of the previous owners. Not necessarily the guy I bought it from, because this is a different person. I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming it was the person that owned this truck and probably did all the modifications to this truck. Aside from you know the stacked up washers used as spacers to try to get these seats to sit normal, and and all the hackery that went on inside this truck. I mean, I'm not going to show you the details, but I I found this letter in here. Uh, I mean, 
it paints a picture, I guess. You know, all the empty beer cans and the beer koozies and all of the the marijuana paraphernalia. And I mean, I found like I don't know what you call them, used up roach butts or whatever, all over inside here. And this is a this is a court order uh, for somebody to surrender his custody of his child to his ex-wife and to take um, parenting courses. Anyway, he was basically ordered to, by the court to take parenting classes. And so, anyway. Sad story. It's a shame that people go through this in their life or they put others through this. Um, looking inside the glove box, there is nothing in the glove box. I'll show you the only things that I'm going to be saving out of here. Well, not even saving, just things that I found that weren't trash. So, uh, I, some, for some reason I have a, an RCA Universal Remote here. I got this little caddy that just kind of floats around in here. It looks like there may have been an attempt to attach it somehow to something. A nice Sharpie S gel pen. A backup battery. Don't know if it works. And the charger for the battery. And then a little stubby screwdriver. But that's really about it. Um, I'm going to go through now and I think I'm going to pull this wiring out. In this, I'm going to unmount this amplifier. Uh, I don't have a plan for the sound system quite yet. I don't even know what these came with. I noticed that there are speaker grills and up here in the front, and I think there may be, I don't know. Um, there's a, a speaker grill over on that side, so maybe there was space on this side for a speaker grill as well, um, for a speaker. And then maybe in the doors, these are just vents. Uh, I really don't know, but... Um, Regardless, I need to come up with a plan. I did look up this stereo and you know, it gets Mostly favorable reviews. It's nothing fancy. It's just a uh, Bluetooth stereo and somehow this centerpiece comes out and turns into a phone holder But I don't know how that is. I don't know uh, No idea how that works, but it, you can see that this whole adapter kit is just kind of a rickety mess so I might have to play around with that and come up with a game plan for that um, but that's uh that's way down the line I'm gonna pull out this stereo or this amplifier and wiring I'm gonna disconnect the wiring from the battery I'm gonna vacuum everything out on this side and then I'm gonna look to see how involved it's gonna be to pull out this mat this uh, whatever the vinyl flooring um, and then uh, I'm running short on time today so I may not get done with it but we'll see how far I get now don't get me wrong I guess I'm not condemning this person just because he smoked a little weed or he drank a little beer or whatever you know I just I feel like all of the uh, just all the little bits and pieces of evidence and then that letter that, finding that letter at the end kind of tells a story it may not be the truth but that's the story that this truck tells. I would love to get a bench seat back in this truck. I think it would fit everything. You know, if I could find a nice red or gray bench seat to pop in here, I think that would be great. Anyway, back to business. That power cable wasn't even crimped right. It just fell right out of the crimp connection. And this one's only a half a ring connector. I was just getting ready to say that this looked like it was professionally installed because of the ring connectors and the heat shrink, but maybe they used a kit. How did that light up? It must have, it must have been a capacitor because I don't have any power hooked to this anymore. Okay. 
I'll have to look this up. I doubt it's anything fancy, but um, it's got uh, it's a four channel amp with two of the channels that are bridgeable. So I could do a 2.1 or I could do four, um, you know, just four speakers with this if I choose to. And I might, I might still do it. I mean, this thing looks like it needs all new everything. So um, it's kind of a blank canvas. I think they pulled the speakers before whoever pulled the speakers before they uh, sold this truck, whether it was the guy who just sold it to me or the person before him because um, there were all these cut cord, these um, spade connectors here that were just cut, just cut ends that look like they were twisted onto the end of the speaker or something. Uh, I know that in the uh, marketplace listing, there was a bunch of new speakers and boxes sitting on the passenger seat. And that did not get left in the truck when I bought it. So, now that, that wire, fell apart as well. I mean, these crimps were done with a pair of pliers, it looks like, so it was a fire hazard waiting to happen on that big old four gauge cable. What do we got going on here? Looks like something going to the steering wheel. like we got one wire going to the head unit one wire it's just punched right through the the firewall I noticed that before there's just there's no grommet or anything it's just a ragged hole drilled through the firewall maybe I don't know a couple other wires coming from the dash so my guess is that's either going up to those it's probably going up to those speakers up under the dash I think I'm just going to coil everything up and keep it in the footboard right now. Um, they did leave a roll, well, what's left of a roll of speaker wire in here too. Um, I'm going to disconnect the power lead that is attached to the battery currently. Um, it's actually floating around here, so I need to be careful because that, that's the positive and it's just hot right now. And then I need to pull these thresholds, I think. Yeah, I probably should pull these, these thresholds and then I can get this uh, vinyl out of here. Anyway, that's where I'll, it's going through the uh, firewall. It's unfortunate, you know, it, the, the installation isn't horrible as far as, you know, they put a fusible link right here, big old fuse. You know, and it's, well, you know, it's probably the same type of crimp that was on the inside, but it seems pretty firmly attached, at least on the battery side. But, you know, the issue is that that hole in the firewall definitely needs a grommet, or the ragged edge of the steel is just going to cut right through that cable and then short 12 volts directly to ground, um, which isn't good for anybody. What is that, an 8 millimeter? So it's best to just disconnect both of those auxiliary wires there because the red one is for that security system that doesn't work, which that reminds me I need to pull that out too. Tighten this up. I'd love to get that battery hold down freed up, but I think that's going to be a project for a different day. We can get this battery back kind of where it belongs. I don't know why I'm not pulling this stuff. I 
None of these crimp, none of these crimps are good. Look at that. All right. Well, at least I can pull the wire through from the inside. Rolling fire hazard. And then I just gotta separate all of this electrical tape. I've got cut wires here. I think these were the original speaker wires. Maybe. I don't know. Can't even tell if there's a if there's a speaker behind that grill anymore. I doubt it. No, she's empty back there. And get my hands on another one of these speaker grills. I'll pop six by nines back in there. And little whatever those are, five by sevens in the fronts. Won't even need a subwoofer. All right, I'm gonna clean up that wire and then I'm gonna pull that vinyl. I guess I can store all this extra stuff back here. An attempt was made to solder that connector on. Well, I'll tell you, the wiring job could have been better. They did everything a beginner does, aside from maybe trying to splice together two pieces of that four gauge with a wire nut or something like that. But let's see how bad these floors are. Not too optimistic. Oh yeah, that is crusty. Holy crap. That's bad. Let me pull the other side and then I'll pull it back and you can see what I just saw. Uh, you know, this is what took me down that rabbit hole with that, that VW. Those rusted out floors. Still haven't gotten that thing back together yet. Strip that screw. You know, it's just this felt mat underneath here, and then a vinyl on top. There's nowhere for water to go once it gets under there. It's like either have vinyl with no mat underneath or do carpet, you know, it's, it's bad news. What in the world with the wiring and whatever the heck that bag is. This is, I guess this, whatever this plastic thing is, some type of sound dampener, but it is just waterlogged. Oh my goodness, it is waterlogged. I guess, it, oh, it looks like it's a heat shield is what it is. Look at that, you can still see the water in there. How long has that been there? 
Look at this. So it's, uh, it's like paper thin. So this rust repair just got way more extensive. I was just going to patch in some small pieces, but it looks like I'm going to have to do the entire floors now, or at least the floor, the footwells. Let's look at the other side. Well, if anything, it'll give this poor truck an opportunity to dry out. I don't think that floor is going back in there. I found some type of vacuum hose T and then an 11 millimeter. Why couldn't it have been a 10? I've got some broken wires up there. Um, I don't know what it goes to. I think all my lights work. Looks like it goes to one of my lights. Who knows? I can sort all that out later. It's got lots of excess wiring run back here. I'll have to, you know, Trace all that down. I think this is the speaker stuff. Look at that tunnel though. Looks brand new. <sighs> How interesting. Alright, well, I don't know what I was expecting. But, I guess it could have been a lot worse. I'm going to get the uh, seats back in here. And um, so I can get the truck out of here, and clean up my mess, and, and I'm going to call it a day. Whew, it's a hot one today. So thanks for joining me on this journey. It's an interesting one. Um, I really am excited about getting this truck fixed up. Uh, I'm still, that rust still doesn't really um, intimidate me. It just surprised me a little bit, I guess. But uh, I'm not too worried about it. This should be still a fair, relatively relatively easy fix um, compared to other major rust in other places. That's about as much interior work as I'm going to do for now. I think my next step is going to be, I think I'm just going to cut and buff the exterior, the paint. I, I want to buff this paint out and I want to see what it looks like, see if, it'll, if it will buff out. I think it will. I think it's going to look pretty cool. So I got to gather up some supplies for that. After that, I think I'm going to bring the suspension back up to its stock height. I found some relatively inexpensive uh, springs and struts off of uh, rockauto.com. Uh, I'm not buying the cheapest thing available. I'm going to buy what they call OEM grade, so it should be as good as it was when it rolled off the production line. And then I will revisit lowering it the right way down the road when I can save up some money for some actual like Bell Tech, like actual high quality lowering parts. And that would include spindles and spindles by themselves are like $200 for the pair. So, um, so that'll be down the road. I also still need to source 15 inch steel wheels for this. I'd like to at least get the, the wheels up to that size. The tires on this are shot, so it's not like I'm sacrificing anything because I'd have to get new tires anyway. Um, so if I could find steel wheels in a 15 inch size with this lug pattern, I'd be happy. Besides that, once I do get back on the interior, um, I'm obviously going to fix the floor pans, fix the stereo. I'm going to uh, dynamat most of this interior I'm going to replace all of the, the window sweeps and the seals around the windows. Um, a couple of them have already been replaced, but some of them are in really bad shape. I'll do the door seals while I'm at it. And then when we get to that point, um, I still have to I still have to address the um, the transmission leak is going to be a big one, so I, I probably need to just pull off the tail shaft housing. Um, replace the seals in there, see if that helps the leak, 
and then I need to do some research about the speedometer cable um, junction and see if that could be a cause for the leaking as well. Um, once I get done with all that, maybe far, far future, I'll look at either replacing or doing something to repair the dash and maybe something um, to do with the headliner. Maybe try to make myself a custom headliner that will fit around this sunroof bezel. So anyway, that wraps it up for today. Thanks everybody for sticking around, especially those of you that stick around this far. I really do appreciate you. Um, any advice, any comments, anything, just leave them down in the comment section below. The GMCS 15 project continues on. If you want to stay up to date with the project, just hit that subscribe button. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you later.